Friends, let us pray. May God's word be spoken and may God's word be heard. Amen. We're all familiar with the famous saints. We know St. Peter, the rock of the church. St. Philip, who baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. St. Stephen, the first chosen to be a deacon in the church and who suffered a brutal death that would lead to Saul's conversion to be St. Paul, one of the most influential writers and thinkers of our early church. And naturally, St. Barnabas, our namesake and the son of encouragement. We remember all of those saints. But there are plenty of names that also land in this saint category, and over time, we've added many names to the roll call of the saints in our church calendar. For example, today is November 3rd, which, if it weren't All Saints Sunday, would be the date that the Episcopal Church remembers Richard Hooker, an English priest of the late 16th century, who is best known for his defense of the English Reformation under Queen Elizabeth I. That Reformation gave us the Church of England of today and the first Book of Common Prayer. Hooker was both a parish priest and a distinguished scholar. He described the church as not being just an assembly, but a society. For Hooker, an assembly was a gathering of people who would do acts of public worship together. But a society went beyond the time of being gathered in worship. A society of people not only took in the words of scriptural revelation, the ancient traditions, applying reason and experience to all of it, it would take those good things back into the community, bringing their experience out because they had been gathered in the name of Christ. This idea of commemorating the saints and then by extension all the faithful departed dates back to the early Middle Ages during the times of the Christian martyrs. The feast days as we have come to be, have come to know them in the Episcopal Church seemed connected to festivals held in Ireland and then were made more general to all of Europe by Pope, Greg Pope Gregory IV. And while saints were generally thought of as people of faith who did amazing and heroic things in the name of Christ, the truth is that the many people that we remember in the church were ordinary people who responded to circumstances in their lives and times out of faith and conviction to do what was right. Think about our diocesan saint, Anna Alexander. She wasn't someone who wrote heady tomes or did amazing works of bravery, but what she did do is build a school and a church in a coastal community in Georgia and Despite the obstacles put in her way due to racism and prejudice, she persisted. And her faith kept her going, kept her pursuing the goal to educate the children in panic and give them a pathway to greater possibilities. She did all of that as a deaconess in the church at a time when the Diocese of Georgia had sidelined their black church members. Or consider Jonathan Myrick Daniels, remembered as one of the martyrs of the civil rights movement in Alabama. Daniels was a seminarian and was known to actually be a bit of a hothead. He graduated from Virginia Military Institute, but he struggled to figure out the direction for his life. It was at an Easter service in 1962 at Church of the Advent in Boston that he felt called to the ordained priesthood. While in seminary and listening to the Magnificat being sung at evening prayer, 
Jonathan Daniels knew he needed to respond to Dr. Martin Luther King's call to join the struggle for racial equality in Alabama. He marched. He lived with and tutored black children and brought their families into the segregated Episcopal churches of Alabama. He died tragically, getting shot while defending a young black teenager named Ruby Sales from a white gunman. She survived that day, but the experience left her mute for about six months. But because she saw the love of a white man cut down by the hate of another white man, Ruby Sales earned a master's in divinity and now teaches and lectures on the need for redemptive healing and deliverance from a culture that is centered on whiteness. Not white people, but the whiteness that keeps us so divided and deluded and refusing to do the work that will set us all free. Like Jesus calling Lazarus out of the tomb saying, unbind him, we need to be free to tell all the stories of our people and not just the ones we want to hear. I imagine there will be a time when Ruby Sales passes on to the next realm that we might see her memory being honored along with Jonathan Daniels. These are the ordinary people who rose and are still rising to meet these times that we are living in today and walking faithfully with God as they do the work that needs to be done. There are hundreds of other stories, people who will never have their names written up in a history book, who are doing that work of Richard Hooker to be the society of the church. Their names and their stories, the memory of who they were and what they did to make a difference in the lives of others, still lives on through us who knew them. When we think about the way their lives intersected with ours, it recalls for us the relationship as a friend or a family member and how they showed us something or taught us something that helped give us a glimpse of making Earth a little more like our vision of heaven. Now, in a few minutes, we will be saying aloud the names of those who have died and gone to take their place in the great cloud of witnesses that surround us. You're all going to think I'm a little strange here, but I'm going to ask you to do something that we've never done in the past. There's a custom I have seen when I've attended Jewish services. As they read the roll of who have died or are marking the anniversary of the death, the family members or friends who have an attachment to that name stand up so the congregation can bear witness to their grief. It's a visual reminder that we don't do this life alone when we see others who are standing with us. So today, I'm going to ask that as you hear the name of your loved one, your friend, that person you enjoyed being with but see no more. As you hear that name, please stand as you are able. I know some of you that's going to be hard. But please stand if you're able to. And please remain standing until that prayer for those who have died is finished. Mother Teresa once said, God did not call me to be successful. God called me to be faithful. As we each strive to walk with God as a society of believers, and not just as an assembly, may we look to those good lessons we've learned from the saints to do our work of making a better world here on earth. In the name of our unholy and undivided trinity,